Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Placed in Shelter. Again, I'll be your host, Ryan Caterizzoli. Thank you again to everyone that's here joining in. I really appreciate your support in this. Uh, hopefully, you're enjoying it as much as we are enjoying producing it. So um, just a reminder, if you are catching this on YouTube, you can go ahead and join us in live every single day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, if you want to join the conversation, ask a few questions, or perhaps even send in some topic ideas, the email address placedinshelter at gmail.com is going to be the best place to do that. Um, so today's episode is actually going to be what I like to call, perhaps, toaster adaptability. So when we talk about this topic here, we're going to have three different sections. So section number one is going to be kind of the basics of toasters, what they do, what they do well. The second section is going to be what Hatco's color guard is. And then number three, why the Hatco color guard and the TQ3 provide a solution that isn't out there on the market. So starting out with TPT pop-up toasters, basics here. Everybody knows these are units that can be done made to order. You're going to have much longer toast times and you're going to have much more limited volume with these. Uh, so they're great in smaller applications, but if you need to do 200, 300 pieces of toast in an hour, this is not going to be the option for you. Now, there is also another kind of toaster called a contact toaster. I'm not going to talk too much about that. It's obviously um, exactly what it says it is. It's a contact toaster in which 90 plus percent of the time it's being used for buns, and that bun is going to be directly on that toaster, and it's going to have a seal. You often see that for burger places because it attempts to make a barrier between the bun and the condiment so it doesn't deteriorate the bun. Uh, you can get a similar result with the conveyor toaster, but you won't quite get the seal that you would get uh, as if you were to brown the bun on a flat top. The other type of toaster we have is a conveyor toaster. What are conveyor toasters really good at? Well, obviously volume. Conveyor toaster, as it says, is you can sit and load this toaster back to back to back, and it will give you the throughput that you need when it comes to your toasting needs. Now, one of the big things that we tend to see with conveyor toasters, they do have one problem, and that problem is the versatility. So why does it have a problem with versatility? Well, as you can see in this picture here, if you can see my mouse moving, there are three dials on the toaster. The top small dial and the bottom small dial are going to be the different temperature settings for the top elements and the bottom elements. Now, the larger knob that you see there is going to control the conveyor speed. So the question comes up, as I'm batch loading this full of toast or white bread or wheat bread or sourdough, and I want to switch to a bagel like you see here in the picture, to change the settings, you can attempt to move those dials the best that you can to get to the settings that are required for that bagel. However, getting back to the exact same settings all the time proves to be rather difficult with a standard conveyor toaster. They do a great job for volume, but versatility tends to be the biggest lacking point. Now, we have, um, moving on in the topic, is going to be our HACO color guard system. Now, the color guard is built in with all of these toasters that you see here, even the ones that have the dials. What does HATCO's color guard actually do? As you batch load a toaster, and let's say put 50, 60, 70 pieces of bread back to back through the toaster, the toaster itself is going to lose heat from the toast taking it out, and therefore the light, uh, the, the darkness of the toast is going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Now, the color guard system is set up to counteract that. So as you batch load, there's an algorithm built in that when it senses temperature loss, it will slow down the conveyor so that you're going to get the same toast profile as you're batch loading the toaster. So that comes into play even with the toaster that's shown on the screen right now. So where does the versatility and the adaptability come in? That's what the TQ3 does. So this is a newer line of toasters, but the benefit here is that in conjunction with the color guard, I can actually go in and program 12 different recipes to be completely accurate every time I use that. So 
When I go in, as you see on the picture here, there's a regular white toast, there's a bagel, a croissant, maybe an English muffin. I know that when I choose that setting, I'm gonna get the same top temperature, bottom temperature, and conveyor time every single time I press that setting. Now, with the conjunction of the color guard, if I'm running something that requires hotter temperatures on the top or bottom, and I switch to a recipe that requires lower temperatures, that color guard will kick in and it will then speed up the belt to make sure that it goes through and gives me a similar toast profile every single time I choose one of those recipes. So this particular unit now gives you the versatility to move between products without being stuck into one product over and over again and then another product over and over again. You can jump back and forth. I can do buns one minute, I can do an English muffin, and then I can switch back to toast. The color guard will do the adjustments for you, so your times might be different than you're used to doing maybe in your testing when it was fully running for English muffin. However, the toast profile will come out the same. So this gives you that difference. Now, the last section I wanna talk about is how to get the most out of this toaster. So with this toaster, you're gonna to have different settings. One thing you have to know is that there's no voltage regulation inside this toaster. So although I can give you your recipe from the factory on the unit, or you can simply use a USB to set up those recipes, the problem is going to be every single restaurant is gonna have different power coming out of the wall, and it'll be close, plus or minus 5% usually, but that makes a difference. That could be a second or two on the belt, either too long or too short, which will give you a different toast profile. So number one, set up each toaster to the individual store's power requirements. Step number two that's gonna help us out is going to be make sure that you understand the lighter and darker setting. Here's why that's important. When you come in in the morning and the bread happens to be fresh that day, or somebody perhaps left the bag open so the bread's a little bit drier than normal, when it's toasted, it's going to be different. You don't have to go in and change the settings every single day. The lighter or darker feature will allow you to plus or minus five settings, and it's roughly 10% each setting, and then you can lock it in for the day until the toaster's turned off. So that way you're not going in and constantly changing out the program. You simply use the lighter or darker setting. The last thing that you have to fully understand is gonna be the power save option. You can change the power save so that after a certain amount of time, whether it's 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and what's gonna happen is if no one has touched the screen and no heat loss is sensed inside the toaster, it will say, nothing has been run through here, I'm gonna go ahead into power safe settings. Now, when you come out of power safe settings is the most important thing. If it goes into power save and the next time you use it is during the lunch rush, the first products that go through while the toaster is coming back to temperature are going to take longer. So you're going to have to play with each individual store to figure out is that 50% power reduction, is that 70%? What do I need to make sure that my store is going to function all the time? So if we understand those things, we can have wild success with the TQ3's versatility. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's talk. So we're going to go ahead and stop share here. And we will open it up to the chat. Once again, if you have any questions about today's conversation, you can go ahead and type those right into the chat here, and we will do our best to answer those questions. So. Any questions, feel free to put them in right now. Uh, is Dan Friegel also known as Toaster Boy? Uh, you know, I don't know what title Dan goes by these days because Toaster Boy is no longer his segment. In fact, Joe McAuliffe, who's on here, is, I believe, Prince Toast. Uh, so he is now taking over the toaster lines at Hatco U. Uh, so Dan is actually kind of the king of food warmers now, although toasters will probably always share a special place in his heart. Ah, can you put butter on the toast before it goes through the TQ series conveyor toasters? No, mm, I, I don't even wanna get around that question. The simple answer is no. And the problem you run into is because as you butter the product, 
the elements are exposed as the conveyor is running through. And it may work for a short time, but there will come a point when that toaster probably starts on fire. So the answer is no, we cannot butter the products before they're going in. Good question. Are there color guard options available on the TPT toaster? The TPT toaster has a setting on the side of it that will allow you to change the uh, length of time that it's inside the toaster. So there's not gonna be anything that's changing while the product is in the toaster. This is the most basic toasters that we do have to offer. Uh, can I get custom colors or finishes on the TQ3? Yes, like you saw in the pictures, right now we currently offer black, we offer red, and we also offer a stainless steel model. We've toyed around with some other colors for particular customers. In fact, I did a white one one time, uh, and it looked really good when it was brand new. But the problem is that upper area where the toast is going in is exposed to the heat, and you get colored uh, discoloration. Um, and on the white, it made it look yellow brown near the opening of the unit. So we ended up going away from that. If your customer has a large enough opportunity and they want a particular color, by all means work with your regional, we can look into getting different colors. But right now, red, black, and stainless. Uh, so you don't have any leg time to wait when you change to a different setting. On the TQ3, you do not have any leg time in the amount of time that it takes for you to press the button and put the product in. The quote unquote lag time will be if the color guard needs to make an adjustment. And that could actually be the opposite of lag, it could speed it up. If I'm running a product that's at 75% on top, 75% on bottom, and I switch to a product that I only want to have maybe 50% on top, that color guard will speed up the conveyor and push the product through faster because if it stayed at the same normal time, the toaster hasn't had time to come down in temperature. The exact opposite is true. If I'm going from a cooler temperature to a hotter temperature, um, the conveyor may slow down the product so that it remains in long enough to get the same toast profile. Um, this works great when you're bouncing back and forth between closer temperatures. If you do have some that are extremely different, um, you may push the toaster to its limits. Um, and one that comes to mind is if you're doing, for example, buns where you only want to toast one side and you run it through with 0% on bottom and 90% on the top, and then you want to switch to a product that requires temperature on both that is really pushing the unit to its limits and it's one of the extremes we've found. Um, there you may have some struggles. But outside of that, switching between a bagel, an English muffin, uh, a piece of wheat bread, a piece of white bread, those, can, those adjustments can be made as you're putting product through the unit. Great question. Uh, how important is the catch tray on the TQ series? The Alu catch tray. So uh, the aluminum catch tray. So the aluminum catch tray on the bottom of the unit um, does allow, if you're familiar with aluminum, it is a great heat sink. So it allows for the product to actually remain on that hot tray as opposed to going onto a cold tray, heating the, the piece of toast being hot, creating condensation and making the toast soggy. So the aluminum tray is a, a very important part if you're allowing the toast to sit there for uh, more than a couple of minutes. Good question. Uh, can you explain the secret button and code on the TQ3? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to in terms of the secret button. Um, I don't think I want to list what the passcode is here because this is going to be something live to the public. Um, and because we don't change that, I don't want any of our customers, our owners, our managers having one of their employees see this and know what the code is but the code can be found in any manual and you can also give me an email and I can send it to you as well. Uh, what do you estimate Hacko's Toaster's market share to be? I don't know what the market share is gonna be. You know, that changes every single day. Um, I don't know what that answer actually is, but good question. Can I say the word bagel? I know everyone makes fun of the way I say bagel. I don't know why, it's the way I've said bagel my entire life, but bagel. And Joe McAuliffe has just pointed out 17 years best in class. 
Uh, so if there's no further questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up with some people's favorite part of the show. I will share my screen once again here. If I can find it, there it is. Uh, our meme of the day, how do you know the difference between being too close and social distance? Well, here you go for all of you Tiger King fans out there. Too close on the left and the proper social distance is listed on the right. Uh, this is a, a favorite one of dog lovers here. It's for your own good. You've got to stop touching your face. So for the first time, our dogs can place this on us as opposed to putting it on them. And last but not least, for those introverts out there, uh, when you find out your daily lifestyle is actually called quarantine. So there we have it. Once again, thank you everybody for showing up. Uh, again, if you're watching on YouTube, you can sign in every day, 3 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, and you can ask any questions or send us your topics. Uh, if you do see this on YouTube, it would be appreciative. Uh, let us know you're liking the content by liking, sharing. Also, you can subscribe to the Hacko channel. If you hit the bell notification down in the lower right, that will give you updates every single day that our videos are going live. And with that, thanks everybody for joining in. We'll see you tomorrow.